this video, I'm going to show you how to use online collections of text uh, to find useful linguistic information. These are texts that are, have been purposely designed uh, for you to explore um, linguistic patterns in English. Uh, to some extent, the use of Google, as I showed in the previous video, to do a little linguistic detective work is kind of using uh, Google as a corpus. Uh, as a source of online uh, text. But what I'll be showing you today are tools that have been used, have been created specifically for language exploration. You may be familiar with images like this. This is what is commonly known as a word cloud. And you notice that there are some words that are bigger than others on here. And if you kind of just have a glance at this, you can pretty much guess the source or the, the kind of text from which this image was derived. And it did come from this Wikipedia entry, Online Learning in Higher Education, which is probably pretty much what you guessed. And what you see in this image is that uh, basically the larger the word, the more common it was in the source text. And that's pretty much the basic idea behind the use of corpus tools. It's, uh, it's a lot to do with frequency, it's a lot to do with looking for patterns, especially frequency-driven patterns uh, in the text. And, and uh, very generally, the, the more volume of text you have, um, the, the more useful the information, although um, there are some caveats, which I'm going to talk about in, um, in a later video with regard to that. A corpus, there, therefore, is basically a collection of text. And corpus tools are electronic interfaces that help you find linguistic patterns in text. Uh, one of the linguistic tools I'll be talking about today, uh, the first one, is SKELL, which is Sketch Engine for Language Learning. Here is the, uh, the web address for that. So let's go there. If you don't go directly to the link that I showed you in the slide, you can just Google SKELL. Um, and the, sur the first link that you get usually when you type in SCAL um, is this one. That's what you should be looking at. And <clears throat> what you see here is a, a menu of options here at the top. Examples, words, sketch, similar words, more features, more languages. Um, so let's put in <clears throat> a, an academic word uh, like finding as a noun as in research findings. Um, and I'll look for that. And what is retrieved is, first of all, you see the word finding here, but we don't know if it's being used here as a, a verb or a noun. What we do see is um, its frequency per million, so uh, how often it occurs in the text that it's collected, which um, is in the millions for this corpus. and each of these lines here are act lines from actual um, authentic uh, material, different source texts that have been collected for this uh, so the, for this corpus, so different source files. Uh, so here you have, and this can be useful just to find examples, uh, lots of examples beyond the typical dictionary examples that you might find in in the dictionary, such as the the um, the One Look dictionary that I showed in another video. Uh, so here you see one early finding has immediate practical value. But then you see in number two, uh, here are five fresh local projects worth finding. And so here you have kind of a noun use, and here you have a verbal use. So what you can do is you click on, if you click on word sketch, here um, uh, finding is as a noun, and so the linguistic information here will be for specifically for a noun. And here you see, for example, verbs with the word finding as a subject. And you might think, well, that's not very useful. Well, actually, it can be, because what's here, going back, you go back to the concept of frequency. These words here, these verbs, are presented first in, in accordance with their frequency, so how they collocate remember we talked about the word collocation in a previous video, how commonly these words collocate with the word found, finding. And to check on, uh, to check what they mean by this is you can click on 
suggest. And then you can see the pattern that is being um, evinced in this um, that this the suggestion here or this um, collocation. So finding suggest this finding suggests money does not cause long term happiness. These findings suggest an increasing trend towards family disruption during childhood. Um, and you also have uh, verbs with finding as an object. So again, you can click on that. And so these findings are summarized in figure three. A tertiary source summarizes findings, etc. cetera. Uh, adjectives with finding, the most common one apparently is preliminary. The findings are preliminary. Task force cautions findings are preliminary. And uh, modifiers of finding. So, oops. Um, so apparently, research uh, finding is a common pattern. The research findings on particular works are constantly published. Our research findings put this trend into perspective. This chapter has presented my main, my main research findings, and so on. So that's the most common collocation with finding. And uh, modifiers of finding, nouns modified by finding, um, and other patterns that you can identify. So you can see how that can be useful uh, to help you identify collocation, which I mentioned in a previous video, can make your writing um, sound uh, more natural in the sense that uh, using the most formulaic, we talked about how uh, academic writing can be formulaic, most formulaic uses of academic terms and, um, and phraseology. You can also uh, look at uh, words that are similar. So you see that it does a little word cloud for you as well of these, syn of these synonyms. And uh, you find other other candidates that can be used um, uh, as an alternative if you want to uh, find something that not sounds so repetitive, which is a common problem when 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 is writing. And so I'll, I'll stop there with scale. I, I think scale is a pretty useful tool and a good example of uh, what is a corpus tool, how how one can use uh, corpus data. So another tool that is actually very useful um, because of the size of the corpus that it uses um, is the Corpus of Contemporary American English, which has over a billion words. It's also called COCA. And if you just Google COCA corpus, you'll land on this. And you're going to have to register and uh, when you do, this will you create a a name. This is ask for your name and email, and uh, that will allow you to do a certain number of what are called queries. So use the corpus a few times, um, and it's worth doing it. It's free. Uh, the latest version of the Coca interface is more user friendly than it once was. And um, there are a lot of things that make it uh, quite useful. Uh, you can, just like with the other tools, you can simply find examples. So if I put in the word research, I can find many examples of that. I can see, first of all, how common it is. And I can see examples of it by clicking on it. And um, that can just be useful to see it contextualized um, but I can also see how common is it in different types of um, language use. So I can see that where the word like research is most commonly used in academic language, not so much in other uh, genres. I can also see that its use hasn't changed very much over the years. It's still very much used. It's still a common word used in today's world. and um, Within academic language, I can see which fields it appears more commonly. So it's very common in education, not so much in law 
and uh, political science and common in business and so on. The most, the most useful uh, purpose for this corpus interface, COCA, I think is in when you explore the word itself. So when I click on the option for word and I ask for detailed word info, I can see once again that it's most common in academic language, but I can also see um, what are the most common collocates. So what are, what, what, which collocations, combination of words most particularly go together. So you see that the most common collocate noun that comes after research is research center, research study, research institute in that order. So whatever appears first is always the most common one. The most common verb that happens before research is conduct, conduct research or research then followed by suggest. And if you want to see examples of that, you can simply uh, find more information about the word uh, conduct there. And so you can see study was conducted as an example of use. And so what you also have here is beyond the collocations and also related words, which can be useful, the clusters. So you can see how research is used, the word research is used um, in, in commonly in, uh, in actual examples. So uh, with research and this one dot, it's showing uh, research as a, a word and what follows research most commonly. So research on, research in, research has, research center, and then what most commonly happens before the word research for, for research, future research, in research, previous research, and so on. And then what two words, or what are called bigrams, follow the word research. So research and development, research has shown, research is needed, and so on and so forth. So, and then you can also see um, many examples for the word research. So this is a, a very useful tool um, to explore words to become a, a, a lexical detective. Okay, last but not least, I want to show you how to conduct what's called a lexical profile. So one of the best sites for this is um, LexTutor. I think the official name is Complete Lexical Tutor, which has so many different tools. But the tool we're going to be focusing on here is what's called a vocabulary profile. So at the bottom here of the menu, you have vocab profile. And you click on that and you see there are a number of different tools. And today we're going to be focusing on this VP classic, which is vocabulary profile classic and VP phrases. Okay. To demonstrate uh, how it, this is used, I'll go back to the this Wikipedia article of on online learning in higher education. I'll just do a copy and paste of the, the main text and I'll put it into one of the tools starting with VP Classic. VP Classic um, has a window there that to paste the text in. However, if you have a very large text you can also um, you can also uh, choose a file from your computer. But we'll just we'll just type it in now. And what this does is it gives me um, a way to improve my vocabulary or see the complexity of a text. When I submit the window, it gives me a vocabulary profile. What you see here to the left is what are called the K1 words. So this is the first 1,000 most common words in English. So this is what this K1 to 1,000 is. This percentage means that only about 70% of this text is comprised of those most common words in English. Then the next 1,000, so from 1,001 to 2,000, about 5% of the text is made up of that, and the rest are off either off list or what are called academic words, academic word list words, so that's over 10%. 
And when you look at this, uh, you'll see that the words in blue are all words that if you have a decent knowledge of English, you'll, you'll know all of them. So you learn, you know the word learn, you know the word free, you know the word uh, course. And then the green ones are maybe a little bit more advanced. And the yellow ones are all academic. Emerge, Institute, Strategic Computer. So this is helpful in the sense that it can help you see vocabulary in a different way and see if you put your own text in here, probably if all of your, if all of your text, if instead of this being at 70%, let's say it's 90% in K1, that means that probably your text is a little bit too simple. Um, not necessarily, but probably. There are some limitations here, though, um, or rather I should first say that uh, you can also learn some new vocabulary from this. If, if you see words in yellow, for example, that you don't know, or even those in green, since they are common words, they're probably words worth learning. But one of the limitations of this is that it separates things by word. So you see that some some expressions or some collocations like higher education or online learning, they've been broken down into single words. So since vocabulary is not only word, 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 but also collocation and phrases, it's also useful to look at um, the VP vocabulary profile phrases tool. And this has sub tools. So take, if you paste in the same text, you have academic collocations as the first tool. And I can submit that. And as you'll see, what was before broken down into single words, now a lot of it has been put together. So learning environment, higher education, academic writing, these are now collocations that has pulled out. And you can see them highlighted in the text. And so this is another way of developing your academic writing because if you learn not just individual words alone, but also academic collocations, it can improve the overall impression of how you sound and, um, and uh, develop your academic vocabulary that way. Um, on the other hand, if your text has very few academic collocations, maybe it's a sign that uh, that's an area that you need to improve. You can also see academic phrases So at the same time, compared to the importance of, the number of, a lack of, a variety of, and see those highlighted in the text. Um, those are the written ones. And also what comes from what's called the phrase list. Um, and you see other types of phrases there to help that are really important in academic writing, in fact, in all writing in English. And you can see that highlighted in the text. So this helps you see um, vocabulary in a different way and it helps you learn, can help you learn as well. Those are two um, very good tools for vocabulary development and to analyze your own text. Oh, of course, and I can't forget uh, an important one, which is a sentence transitions, which show you um, how to make your text stick together better, the, the uh, cohesion aspect. Uh, so uh, however, similarly, while these are small words that can make a big difference in making your text easier to follow. And so you can see how they're actually used. And again, if you type in, if you paste in texts that are actually useful to you, that, that, uh, that you read, that you, that you encounter and you have to read for your particular um, academic study, they, they'll be, they will seem even more relevant to you. So. Um, I recommend I recommend that as well. So that kind of wraps it up for for the vocabulary profile tool, which I highly recommend. So that pretty much does it in terms of an introduction to Corpora and how to use ready-made Corpora. Uh, those are tools that I hope you find useful in addition to the tools that have already been presented in this module. Uh, next, uh, the, I will be talking about something I'm especially excited about that I find to be really the most useful of all, which is how to create uh, your own corpus or your own corpora collections of text and how to analyze those with text from your particular discipline. Mm -hmm.